Hey, Ming Tsai here with Simply Ming. I have one of Boston's best in the house, Alex Crabb, James Beard nominated chef, worked at the famous French Laundry and Noma, where he really got his way of cooking. He works on vegetable menus primarily. He's actually gonna be making a dandelion and nudie. A nudie is kind of like a dumpling, kind of like gnocchi, usually no flour in it. Apparently he's gonna bury it in some semolina. That is crazy that something that wet. Yeah. It's gonna to come together, Chef. I'm so impressed. I'm gonna do my own version of a vegetarian dumpling. It's gonna be actually an imitation meat made from pea protein. A lot of people are using it, and hey, if it tastes good and in dairy, if it's better for the environment, yeah, why not try? We are cooking vegetarian right here, right now, on Simply Made. Alex, good to see you. Thanks for being in my kitchen, man. All right, tradition has it, I'm gonna make a cocktail first, just to get us in the mood, and then we get to cook. So if you could do me a favor, uh, that's a list a little bit of chili and salt and lime juice. We could just rim these first and then fill them with ice. I'm gonna fill my thing with ice first. I'm doing a Thai chili paloma. So paloma traditionally is you know tequila with grapefruit juice, right? So we're gonna start with that. Obviously, it doesn't matter the brand tequila, although I certainly have my favorites. What does matter is it's 100% agave, right? There's some tequilas out there that use sugar cane, and if you use those tequilas, that's how you end up with a headache, right? <laughs> you need to drink 100% agave. So we do four ounces, we'll do, for a little bit of sweetener, we'll do just uh, an ounce of triple sec. And we're gonna do just a couple ounces of pink grapefruit juice, and then of course we have, we have to have a little lime. So ounce, two ounces of pink grapefruit. Then ounce of lime juice. Then the heat, the reason this becomes a Thai Paloma, this is a Thai tincture. We use Thai bird chilies, four drops. Incredibly spicy. Oof, and you'll be able to taste it. So let's get this mixed in here. Nice rim job there, chef. Well done. I'm an actual. Yeah, I can tell, I can tell. <laughs> So, did you see a lot of meat growing up and you like OD'd on it and that's why you're doing more veg or is it the training at Noma or what? Uh, I just find vegetables more interesting. I don't know. Yeah. Anybody can cook a ribeye with a little bit of training, but. That is so true. Actually, the person you used to work with, Thomas Keller, said that. He goes, to make a carrot taste good, that's <laughs> much harder than making a ribeye taste good. Cheers. 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 See how we did here. Oh, good? Yeah. Ready to make some nudie? Oh yeah. Awesome, come on, this way, nudie time. All right, chef, what's your dish? Uh, so we're gonna make a dandelion nudie. Awesome. Uh, we're gonna dice some onion, wilt down some dandelion, and ultimately bury it in semolina. Fantastic, so dice this? Dice that, okay. I'll start cutting up the dandelions here. So, you know, do you know the history of nudie? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's basically like a, a dumpling. Right. Uh, that's disrobed or nude. There's no flour in it, like a gnocchi, right? Correct, yeah. Um, although traditional gnocchi is potato only, in theory, right? Potato but, and egg, that's right. how I was taught right. to make it. Why dandelion? I like dandelion in this preparation because it's uh, really bitter. Right. And you can kind of max it out with the cheese. So you could use like watercress or arugula? Yeah, right? anything, bitter anything bitter or not bitter. even bitter. You know, you could make a more, like spinach and, spinach and kale, I think, would be good too. Chef, uh, start the onions first? Yep, sweat those out a little bit. Olive oil? Uh, olive oil, maybe a little butter as well too. Okay. Cool. Got that over oil here. first. I like that. Not too much. It's good. All right. Awesome. So no garlic. You know you can add garlic. I don't add garlic because my girlfriend doesn't like garlic. So I learned how to eat without it. Happy girlfriend. Yeah. Happy uh, <laughs> girlfriend. There you go. Right. <laughs> I think that's how it goes. Any salt and pepper, chef? Yeah. Let's season it up a little bit. Okay. Awesome. Well, these sharp knives really made. Fast work of this. Like <laughs> yeah. this. Or maybe the talented chef <laughs> that got something to do with it. So we'll just uh, let this sauce <laughs> Thank you. sweat out a little bit. And okay. while this is uh, kind of going, yep. we can start the sauce, we can All start right. processing these strawberries. So we're gonna balance it out. This is gonna be kind of like sweet and acidic to okay. go with our rich and bitter. So you're gonna get all the, it's gonna hit everything in the tongue with this. Awesome. So, so I just basically prep the strawberries. Yeah, let's get them out. We're gonna just puree it up so it doesn't have to be super okay. perfect. Strawberries are finally looking nice, right? Takes yeah. a while, I know. New England, 
I know. What is it like? <laughs> July these days, you yeah. get strawberries. So, this all, all goes in the blender. Yeah. Okay. Pop this in. Obviously, you don't need to chop these up, right, guys? Because the blender's gonna do all its work. How about we add a little liquid, Chef? Yeah. Some vinegar now, I think. Yeah. Can get in there. It will come together. Just, I guess we could have chopped the things a little bit, but yeah. there we go. High speed? Yeah, blast it. <laughs> good? Yeah, that's good. Then we can take Want to give it a taste? Yeah, we'll taste it up, see what it needs. A little sugar, and I think that's what it needs. And a little chili. Because, you know, chili seems to be the theme today. Yes. <laughs> that's right. Start with the chili cocktail. All right, give it one more hit. Good? Yeah. Give it one more try, Chef. Make sure it's perfect. Yeah, that's good. good. All right. We have our strawberry sauce, or coulis. OK, we're going to put the dandelions in now. All right, go. Onions are sweat. Right behind you. All right. Beautiful. So how long is that going to take to sweat down? Uh, maybe about five, five minutes or five so. Or six minutes. If you're okay. in a rush, you could add some water to it. Just yeah. Steam it out a little bit. Yeah, All right. no you guys are going to take a quick break. We'll let this stuff sweat down for five minutes. Then we come back, we get to make some nudie dandelion greens. That looks awesome. Yeah, it's been about five and a half minutes okay. or so. Perfect. So we're going to tip it into the bowl. Fantastic. So then what else do you add to this? Uh, you want to grate a little Parmesan for that? Yep. Perfect. I'm going to put the ricotta in. Just to start cooling it down a little Big bit. Big or small? Uh, right. Small. Small. Just mix that in, cool it down. You know, you, so you want this to kind of hold its form. Right. But uh, the moister it is, the juicier it is, the more rewarding your nudie's gonna be at right. the end. More, Chef? No, it's perfect. Yeah, I mean, a nudie is like eating a pillow. It's like eating a first kiss, you know? It's quivering right on the edge. Interesting. You might, it might go to destruction, you never know. <laughs> a little Parmesan in there. I can tell you something, Chef. You and I are never going to know. <laughs> <laughs> OK, we'll see. So a little nutmeg went in. Yep. I'm going to put some more pepper in. OK. I've done this a couple times, so I, I would imagine. feel for it. It's probably like a wonton for me. You've yeah. probably done it a ton. And then we're going to add an egg. OK. We might add more than one egg. Right. We'll see how one goes. Just just by feel, right? Yeah. It's like, it's like bread. It's a preference thing as well. If you don't want, if you want it to be stiffer and cheesier, right? Not so many eggs. Got it. But you have to have at least one, right? Because that have protein one. in the egg is what binds it. It's yeah, you need that moisture. Yeah. The semolina is going to pull the moisture and kind of gelatinize around it. Awesome. I'm going to go half an egg more. I know that's a really. I like to see how you do that. That's chef. a really tedious sort of like. A, it's like a Marco Pure White thing there, I think. So you literally break. Wow. Amazing. We'll hold Half on to that. All right, so it's almost unruly. You see how it's yeah, like? It's very moist. Yeah. That's crazy that it could even possibly come together. But you have more cheese, too. Just a little. I love it. You're right. You know, we're playing with that edge of destruction here, like right. <laughs> like we talked about. Right on the balance, yeah. So, Chef, here's your semolina. You want to put some in here? Let's put half in there. Okay, any special semolina or? Yeah, I mean, it's, you want it coarse, so you don't, you don't want to. I like to use semolina because it is a little coarse. Okay. And it's got a stiffer protein to it. OK, so I think this is my secret. You're going to make little landing spots. Uh, oh, it's escargot. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Now, I'm going to taste this. All right. But it's got raw egg in it. It's raw egg. It doesn't matter if it's raw egg or cooked almost all the way. Either it's hard boiled or it's not. So it's exactly. fine. Yeah. It's fine. Right? I you mean, heard it here first. <laughs> it's fine. It's eggs. Eggs All are right. so good for you. So just so barely. That is crazy that something that wet yeah. is going to come together, Chef. I'm so impressed. Wow. I've, I've seen lots of techniques in my life. I've not seen this one. So give me all the flavors you've done with this. Have you done basically any type of veg? Can you, can you do, I don't know, could you, would you ever do something, any Protein, you know, like fish. The, I think what would happen is that you just make a fish ball, right? Because yeah. so this is going to kind of stay loosey goosey. You know, the ricotta is going to, the egg is going to bind it, but the ricotta and the moisture from the dandelion 
is really going to keep it moist even when it's hot. So that's how you get the like exploding center type of thing. Actually, you know what would be so interesting is if you could take, if you like chicken stock or fish stock, but a gelatinous cube and put it in the middle. Yeah. So it becomes a soup dumpling nudie. Yeah, there you go. So That I just invented. So there. <laughs> So you grew up in Michigan, Ann Arbor, Michigan? Ann Arbor, Michigan, go blue. Awesome. Saturdays, you could hear the roar of the crowd. Oh, it's unbelievable. And you're like, oh, the Michigan just scored another touchdown. It's, it's like the Masters, the roar, the Tiger yeah. roars of the Masters. Awesome. All right, so then you literally bury it. We're going to bury it. Yeah, so you, you, know, you want to have that egg shape down there to kind of support it and keep right. it round. The rounder it is, the more dramatic it is. Wow, this is fascinating. So this is really drawing all the moisture. Sure. To, and then it forms like a skin. Yeah, and you can leave them in. One day you can use it, but it's gonna be, of course, a little thinner. Right. And you, it's cool, we've done it at the restaurant and you can, you know, we've eaten them every day. Right. And you can see the skin growing and growing. Interesting. And it, do, it will get too firm, so. I think like five days is a little too long in the flour, but. But one day's ideal? One day's, I, uh, yeah, one day's. I like it, because it's right Perfect. on that edge of destruction that we're talking about. I <laughs> love this edge of destruction, I think. All right, so we have one. This one's been going for 24 hours, right, Chef? Yeah. All right, let's see. And you have to, you do it, of course, in the fridge because of the raw egg. Right. Okay, here we go. Let's see what we got here. So we're gonna just unbury these. And you can kind of, uh, you know, they... Oh my, that's unbelievable that they... I mean, that's crazy. I mean, yeah. that was the loosest thing possible, and then you have nudie. You wanna shake off a little bit of the excess just so right. you have, like, the perfect layer of skin. Right. And then we can go in the steamer. Okay. All right. Yeah. Straight in. And how long do you steam these for, Chef? These are going to go for six minutes. Okay. You want the inside, you know, you want the, the, the steam's going to gelatinize the starch on the outside and basically seal it in. And then, uh, you know, you want the inside to be warm. Awesome. All Just right. Melt. Six minutes, nudie time. All right, Chef, it's been seven minutes, right? So yeah. Just give it a quick check. See I'm what just going to poke like. these. I'm going to actually poke one. Okay. Therm, see how it is. Yeah, we're good. Okay. What are you looking for? Full, like, at least? Yeah, like 130, 130. 140 okay. or so. Cool. So I'm going to get these into that pan. Okay. Well, let's put a little butter in there. Okay. Oh, Three. Yeah. There four, we go. Oh, uh, yeah, five, four. Come on, hey. Five. Okay. Just to kind of moisten it up on the outside. This is probably the trickiest part. Right. Negotiating them out without ripping the delicate veils. And yeah. Sorry the steamer is so tall. <laughs> there we go. I'm just fascinated by this whole process, Chef. <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable how, how that stayed together. The thing, was, the thing was like a mousse, right? Yeah. Now we'll just kind of just toss them around. Get the so you can see there's a little, it's cooked but it's not like fully hydrated. Right. So you want to just uh, kind of spoon the butter over it or a little bit of the boiling water. Can you grab me a spoon? At the restaurant we make our own ricotta, and uh, we'll use the whey. Oh, interesting. In the okay. bowl to kind of you can so see it just. Butter and water is your whey basically. Yeah. There we go. And then we can go to plate. Awesome. All right. Just, just to make them look alive, you know, not, not like zombie nudies. Awesome. All right, a couple of bowls, chef. This is so cool. I love, I just love this technique because, I don't know, there, I don't know about you, chef, but there's not that many techniques left. I think that none of us have seen before. <laughs> So to see a brand new technique like that is just Yeah, well, you know, I mean, fascinating. and it's, it's not that hard. Let's see it, Chef. How do yeah. you plate this? So now we're going to just sauce a little stra our strawberry coulis here. Just put it down and around just to kind of give it that, you know, the counterbalance of flavors. So pretty. You know, I think a little Parmesan. You yep. Expertly grated Parmesan there. Thank you. On top. Yeah, that's very kind of you. And I'm going to take a little bit of your decorative herb box. That's not decorative, chef. I grow that just for you. <laughs> My parsley. No, I'm just kidding. There we go. Dude, looks fantastic. Looks like Chef Boyardee. It's <laughs> so much better. This is not Chef Boyardee. <laughs> All right, chef, before we sit down at the table, I'm going to make my version of a vegetarian dumpling. Awesome. All right? Can't wait. I need your help. Stick around. Dumpling time.
Chef, I can't wait to try that dish. It's fascinating. I, I know it tastes good because I saw him make it. So I'm going to do my own version. We're using this. Uh, it's a meat substitute. It's made from pea protein. Well, it looks just it, like meat. It looks just like meat, and we're going to use it. Instead of beef, I'm going to make these wontons and then make kind of a Thai coconut um, glaçage, if you would, on top. So if you don't mind, slice through some shallots. Just have them, then give me some half moons. Half moons. And, um, and I'm going to caramelize those shallots. We have Thai bird chilies, which are crazy spicy, right? So I'm just going to do two. When you're working with Thai birds, and this is serious, guys, do not change your contact lens after working with <laughs> oh. Thai birds, right? Because your eyes will burn for a long time. So just really careful with Thai birds. Chilies are no joke. Chilies, especially these Thai birds. And then all these seeds is where there's a lot of heat. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get, that's going to be plenty of Thai birds. That, could, that literally could stop an elephant. We're going to be using wonton skins, right? And then we're going to be adding some Thai basil and cilantro as well. So, Chef, I'll ask you to just rough chop some cilantro for me. You got it. those shallots. Yeah. And then we can get our broth going. I know it's some people, my Italian chef friend says it's cheating, using wonton skins to make, you know, <laughs> to make dumplings. I'm like, it's not cheating, it's smart. I don't think you can have enough Thai basil in a, any type of broth. Adds that great kind of anise quality, right? Yeah, yeah. Richer, it's like richer than basil. Yep. Now this is lime leaf. You use much of this, chef? A little bit, yeah. So lime leaf, a special way to break it down. There's a rib in the middle, right? So I've never seen this before, chef. But you roll the lime leaf on top of each other. Because the rib is a little bit too stiff. So here you want to get super thin slices, go right to the rib, then flip it around, and then do this side. Nice. Time saver. Yeah, time saver and, the, and just the rib itself is just a little bit too. And that's a good amount. It's so fragrant. All right, chef, give me these chilies and we put all or the, not chilies, the shallots. Shallots coming over. Oil. Yep. Come on in. Oops, sorry, chef. Nice. Little salt, little pepper. Very nice. So these guys, we're just going to cook. And I actually want to cook these down. You want to get them to the caramelized, which takes, they shrink by like half in volume and they'll end up being nice and golden brown, which is what we have right there, all right? So it's amazing how much it shrinks down, but it's amazing how sweeter it gets too, right? So in these, I'm gonna take ha half of these out into our meat, in quotes, all right? Yeah, exactly. And then the other half, and then I'm gonna add these extraordinary amounts of Thai bird chilies add this lime leaf, turn that on high. And then here we're gonna deglaze with, I'm calling this a vegetarian fish sauce, it's liquid aminos. Yeah. Have you ever used it before? Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's kinda of like soy sauce, there's no gluten in it, but it has a fermented taste, which mm -hmm. I like. Yeah. So add a little bit of the liquid aminos, all right? And then we're gonna add a little bit of veg stock. Store-bought veg stock is fine. And I just want that to reduce down, all right? So we're going to get that reducing down. Then, let's go ahead and start on our right, uh, top cilantro, please, yeah. Jeff. So we're mixing in those caramelized shallots. I'm just going to take this basil, just rip basil in here. To me, Thai basil and cilantro seems to be the taste of Southeast Asia. All right, that should be good. All right. Yeah, that's perfect, Chef. I'll take half of that. Yeah. In. In. Thank you. Fantastic. So now this is our dumpling filling. Perfect. And I will take your put your cilantro here with my basil. All right, chef. So here are wonton skins we talked about. Yeah. So we can use our fingers for the egg wash, but this is how I like to do this. We'll take a little dollop like this. Okay, take your finger, just third base to first base, right? Fold it over. This, the, the reason you have to do egg wash, now if you are doing vegan, you can just do water, but it's important to get a good seal. And egg wash being a protein helps seal it. Then a little on the end, and then we kind of, some people call them Pope's caps, some people call them um, wontons, that's mm. what I call them. I think the Italians also just call them, I think they call them Pope's caps, don't they? I've heard that, or yeah. Or 
torta, tortellino. I is think. that is that handbag or earlobe? I can never remember. Which I don't one know. Was. I don't know. I'm actually not Italian. Ah. Uh? Yeah. Surprising. I know. Mm. See, see. Yeah. Prego, prego. All right. So let's make about six of these. I think it was the wonton wrappers that gave that away. <laughs> or the lack of an Italian accent perhaps gave it away too. But I like all these herbs in it. Um, you know, we tried, we tried, the, we tried this, this beef, it was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. It's, we... it's pretty full flavored. I'm, I'm amazed. It's, uh, you know, the jury's out. But, yeah, it's but a lot of people are, a lot of people are using it and hey, if it tastes good and in dairy, if it's better for the environment, yeah, why not try? At least once a week, you know, I mean. Yeah, you know, we have meatless Mondays now, right? So maybe this is what you're doing. Maybe you're using this type of meat on a meatless Monday. Uh, I'm 40% I'm slower than you, I think. <laughs> All right, well, we only need six. Three, four, five, and Perfect. that one there. Perfect, come on over with me, chef. Gonna add a big pinch of salt. Let that come, there we go, we can go. Yeah. yeah. Yep, go. See you later, wontons. Like that. All right, those are gonna take, I think, probably four minutes. So now we have our veg stock going down here. I'm gonna let this reduce by about another 50% and I'm gonna add a little bit of coconut milk and we're gonna have a coconut kind of a glassage to go with our wontons. And that's gonna take, I don't know, probably another three minutes. Yeah. Back in three, wontons with beef. All right, chef, so here's, here we're gonna add some coconut milk now. Mm. Nature's, nature's butter, as Vegan I call butter. it. Vegan butter. Yeah. All right, yeah, give me a juice of one lime as well, chef. Oh yeah, give this a try. Oh yeah, I like that, I like that. All right, take our wontons. How's that, chef? Yeah, really good, really bright. I like that. All right, come over here. So we take these wontons like that. High coconut broth. Do you have a favorite spoon? You know how like all the chefs, they're like, yeah, you know, where's my spoon? I, I don't have this one. It's a bigger spoon, but yes. Yeah, it's, you have it. You yeah. can't work without it. Oh, yeah, it's, I know a, that. it's a big spoon. So here we have the cilantro, a little bit more cilantro, and a little bit more. Just a little bit of Thai basil. Chef, we are good to go. Looks like my dish, but through a different lens. Exactly. This guy's so smart. Come on, let's go eat. Yeah. Chef, cheers. Cheers to you. Little Carneros Pinot Noir from California. Cheers. Mm. Should go well with your nudie. All yeah. Right. Can't wait. Yeah, this looks really good. I can't wait to try this. Look at that. That looks so good, chef. Mm. Oh my God. Fresh herbs make it. Dude. First of all, this technique, ridiculous. <laughs> but. The way the strawberries, which have that nice sweetness, plus the kind of the gastricness of the vinegar, the bitterness of these dandelion greens, I love. Because mm. it, like you said it earlier, it's so cut through the fat of the ricotta and the parmesan. Mm -hmm. like, really good, chef, love it. And I love, you know, you wanna not like a strawberry coolie with anything savory, but this is so needed. It, right? Yeah, it balances out nicely. I really like the, uh, the shallots and the sauce really make it Do deep it and rich, yeah, oh yeah. How's, how's the imitation? It's that, I mean, it's good. Well, it, it does what it needs to do. Huh? It's pretty good. I mean, I mean. <laughs> yeah, you killed it. And it has a smoky flavor to it too, mm -hmm. right? I have to be honest, chef. Cheers. You've been a chef a long time as have I. You don't see techniques you've never seen before very often, <laughs> so today I have, so thank you for that. Thank really you. Really impressed, and I will come definitely check you at Asa. To you all now, thank you very much. Always thank you for watching, and peace and good eating.